Elite Dev leaves 343. We have a ton of information about the upcoming Halo event that's much more than just competitive Halo. It's really awesome. We have some Halo MCC news, some new unlocks and achievements, information on upcoming game modes that haven't been announced by 343, and as well, Forge reveal today. So if you want to know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Just so we're all on the same page, a couple days ago here, Jez Corden on Windows Central did put out this report saying that another member of Halo's lead development team is leaving Axe. Xbox and Microsoft, that person being David Berger, who is the technical lead when it comes to the Slip Space engine. Now, there has been a lot of leaks and rumors about current engine use when it comes to Halo Infinite. The current rumor is that they will be moving over to Unreal Engine 5, but we'll see how that plays out. No official word from it. But we have official confirmation now from Jess Corden. This was never announced by the employee themselves, but it was basically known that they were pretty much on the way out. That being that David Berger has actually officially left 343. The person who was like one of the leads behind creating the Slip Space Engine has now left the team. And Jez Corden is a rather credible leaker. We've mentioned him multiple times on this channel here. And he even said that he's inclined to believe the rest of Sean's reporting about Tanaka and potentially switching to engines. But yet there is no confirmation about that. It's just a lot current rumor going around the Halo sphere that things might be switching over to Unreal 5. I mean, this would kind of make sense because of how slow the updates have been when it comes to Halo Infinite. It just seems like there's gotta be something technically wrong with the engine or something going on that really just halts everything in its process. Even though we were told that the Slip Space engine was gonna be able to update faster, create more content sooner and things like that, which, this has been the slowest content and update rollouts we've ever had in the Halo franchise. Check out this creation here by Infinite Forger. This is what an Unreal Engine Halo could possibly look like. Again, I should state that this is definitely created for aesthetics, not for functionality, but you can definitely see how this could actually look in the game. Be kind of crazy, honestly. I mean, this wouldn't be unheard of of games switching engines. We do know that Fortnite actually did a switch right now previously as well, where they switched from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5 and definitely helped out them a lot. But of course, this is a developing story when it comes to switching engines. We do see David Berger leaving, but if anyone else leaves, we'll get some new hires coming in as well. I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Plus, if you guys like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this as well. As also, it really helps out the channel a lot. We have some updates on the huge event happening at the end of this month for Halo. We have Halo Fest as well as the HCS Halo event happening for the World Championship Finals. And I will be at this event. So if you guys want to catch me, make sure to stop by and say hey. But this is what we currently know of right now for the World Championship slash Fan Festival that's going on at the end of this month. They have cosplay events, special guests. We'll have to make assumptions with that one, but we'll, well, as soon as we get some concrete information about who those special guests are, you know, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. We've got 343 dev panels, which could be dangerous for the devs, but we'll see how that goes out. Giveaways and community games and a whole lot more to say as well. So I'm definitely excited about this event. And uh, also keep in mind that there are going to be some interesting Twitch drops with this. The head of HGS Tashi tweeted this out to provide more context about this event at the end of the month really is saying we, we want all Halo fans not just competitive fans to feel like there's something for them at Halo World Championship and the community stage is a big way they're tackling that. A side stage on Friday and Saturday with panels and programming all day long lore, social games, cosplay, dev panels and more. So this is going to be a quite an awesome event to get excited about jumping in. So I definitely will be there. I'll record it, probably even make a blog about it because I'm sure a lot of you guys are interested. This seems like a bit of a merger between HCS and also the Halo Outpost discovery that we had before the pandemic stuff happened. And Tasha did previously say that they are looking to make this kind of end of the year Halo community event thing like a real thing that happens every year, which I'm all excited about that. I definitely like that. Also for the fans joining on site, they will receive an exclusive weapon charm as well, which is sweet. I'm gonna get a cool weapon charm for my gun in game. That's perfect. This end of the year event is definitely setting itself up to be pretty big as the Orlando event was actually a huge success. Cohen from Tashi saying that looking at our data, it appears we've had higher viewership for the Orlando major 
this past weekend across all channels and platforms than we did at Kansas City, which is huge because we've definitely seen the population decline, but I guess the interest of HCS has inclined, which is awesome. Just for reference, I tweeted this out earlier when the event was going on. We had over 100,000 people watching Halo Infinite competitively, which is super cool. Puts us towards the top end of Twitch above the Modern Warfare 2 beta weekend, which is quite awesome to hear. Now, the last event did have the diamond coatings well it sounds like we might have some extra diamond coatings coming our way as well for this event in an interesting reply from hts twitter feed saying that replying to someone who asked about the diamond armor coatings and also a diamond br and they replied back well, why not both? If you're unfamiliar about the recent leaks that we've been talking about for the diamond coating, the Gladiator's Edge is what it's actually called. You can get a chance to see it right here. This is what it looks like on the Mark 7. Here we have the Rakshasa core as well. Then we have the Eagle Strike core on top of that. And here is the diamond encrusted battle rifle, which is like, Heck yeah, man, that's awesome. Recent leaks also suggest there's gonna be a new type of helmet customization with these laurels coming in called the Victory Laurels. That would be a piece of customization you can unlock in game as well. Now it's fine and dandy right now, obviously, but are there gonna be actually any changes when it comes to the future of the HCS? And it definitely sounds like there will be right here. Uh, Ian, who was part of the uh, military side of things when they did that presentation for Orlando, is here, kind of actually provides some information I was kind of shocked about, saying he's excited about Halo because we have the Halo War Championships this month, Forge coming out in November, we have new partners, which we just heard the announcement of Quadrant got announced, which is really awesome to see. Season 2 for HCS is also coming sooner than you think with more events and less downtime, which is fantastic, exactly what Tashi mentioned previously. He also mentioned a meta shift in competitive gameplay where keyboard and mouse will soon be a viable option, which is like, okay, now you have my interest. And then on top of that, you have two new arena maps coming in the rotation as well. Uh, we do know that one of those maps in the rotation is going to be the pit for season two. Tashi did confirm this on, I believe, Twitter or it could have been Reddit, one of those two places. But it's great to see the mouse and keyboard is actually going to get some love. They're actually going to try to change it up a little bit to make it more viable as a pro platform, which is fantastic because right now, playing mouse and keyboard with in Halo Infinite, you're playing at a disadvantage. Clearly, it's a disadvantage. There's nothing if, ands, or buts about it. You just look at this graph right here will showcase the top 100 keyboard mouse players accuracy versus the top 100 controller players accuracy you can see here the top 100 controller players above 55 percent on average when it comes to their accuracy top 100 keyboard and mouse players are just above 45 percent so like a, almost a full 10 percent difference when it comes to the platform right there but also keep in mind that a top 100 keyboard and mouse players are generally more accurate than the 50th percentile of controller players. So there is an aspect of just playing better, but there is does seem to be a bit of some kind of information when it comes to the viability and balance between the two. But it's not all about Halo Infinite. We also have some Master Chief Collection news to talk with you guys as well. This all happened last week, but you guys want to keep up to date. Best way to do that is just to subscribe to the channel. But last week, the MCC got a huge update when it comes to your earn rates of Spartan points now, where it says most weekly pve and pvp challenges now reward two spartan points and five new pose bundles are now available within the exchange as well which is pretty great to see if you guys haven't touched the master chief collection check it out we recently had the confirmation that there will be no purchasable spartan points within the mcc so microtransactions not happening they also are removing the 100 point cap when it comes to your first 100 levels with earn spartan points while leveling up so they're going to retroactively give you some more spartan points as well once that update does go live which looks to be in november so get your uh, mcc game up guys don't be looking rusty out there i mean mcc is really playing out to be like the true live service game there's been so much more content that just dropped back in august now i'm sure many of you have not touched on to it just because of the fact that people are playing Halo Infinite right now but look at all these cool features that were just added into the game right now so there's a lot of really interesting things I remember I was playing on stream and someone was like wait you can have poses at the end of the game now like yeah post match poses are now a thing for customization within MCC seriously I mean it jump in play it have some fun it's actually probably the real true live service Halo game right now now we have some information about new achievements unlocks as well as cross core happening well, let's check it out it was recently announced by 343 that the Halo Infinite campaign and mission replay which is coming in with the November update will come with brand new achievements now most of these achievements are like slightly more kind of like technical kind of things nothing too crazy but it's more like just play the game do this slightly specific thing it'll be doing just fine with 24 new achievements with a unlocking the dankest amount of 420 gamer score which is obviously perfect like this one right here saying defeat Tremonius with a skewer like that's 
probably just play the game do that like that's not gonna be too tough to do the weekly rewards for this month of october were just leaked as well we have a coding for your spartan a coding for a it looks like a warhog in some capacity we also have a stance and a visor but this coding actually looks kind of cool as in here's the coding right here that's going to be for the weekly unlock and basically all you got to do is just earn and killing spree metal one time for the weekly ultimate challenge right there and this is actually like kind of a sweet coding for weekly unlock like i actually might grind for this now i talked about this previously on the channel as well so like i said guys you go on hail news subscribe to the dang channel man make sure you tap that like button too but what we're talking about here is crosscore, and we actually seem like we will be getting some more crosscore customization before the release of season three. Leaky Boy himself, Sir Asia, tweeted this out recently, saying that crosscore equipment partial support will be happening before season three. Not everything will fit though. Now, for more details about what's going to be happening, and saying that things like the torso, hip, helmet, and wrist attachments will most likely be crosscore, saying that coatings are the hardest thing to get crosscore working because every coating has different regions stuff to go with it so slapping on a mark 7 coating to a reach spraying causes the body to glow and do some weird stuff right there so this kind of does line up with what we heard from jerry hook before he left saying that like they'll have to go probably like down piece by piece if they want to make this whole cross core thing actually work out that's why it has been taking so long for this to actually come around but i would assume that we'll get something when it comes to the november update hopefully before season three we'll get some more customization coming in now we have some new information about upcoming game modes that were not announced by 343 as well as some things for a narrative event well let's check it out data mine here recently showcased is an unreleased BTB variant of BTB Ninja, Energy Swords, and Grapple Shots, which, I mean, come on, that just sounds hilariously fun. And also BTB BR, which is very interesting because I know a lot of people out there have wanted BR starts for their game when it comes to big team battle. Now, I'm more in the camp of keeping the sidekick assault rifle starting because when you have this hit scan battle rifle, right, you can laser people across the map instantly. It's just not a good way to have like big team battle play out. It really messes with the map design as well. The battle rifle literally plays like a power weapon in big team battles. And that's one of my old go-tos whenever I spawn into the game, the grab. That tells you something about how good it really is. So to freshen things up, try out some new things, and maybe just kind of shut up the haters about the pistol AR starts and we get BR start mode would actually probably help spice things up a bit and also you know just let them know like what you're really trying to do to the game here because I totally would, would not agree with the BR starts. This video right here showcases some infection gameplay for you guys. Yes I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the chance for infection to come in no, I've seen leaks and rumors saying that not till season four. This is a video that was posted up showcasing that the humans will be using bulldog shotguns, sidekicks, and have grapple shots, while the zombies have only an energy sword, which is kind of interesting because normally when it comes to the infection game mode, the humans kind of move like regular players, and the infected players move much faster but have much lower health to kind of balance that out a bit. So let's we'll see what happens with this. I obviously it would be something that could be easily changed within the set. Settings, but obviously with 343 it could probably take a few months just to take away the grapple shot if that's what is needed but again once we have some more information about infection coming into halo you know i'll share with you guys here on the channel credible leaker bathrobe spartan also tweeted this out saying that we'll have glow ball slayer saying chuck a plasma hot snowballs at your enemies to win no shooting your enemies out here and also super fiesta which they actually shared an image right here of what super fiesta could look like which obviously super fiesta always better than regular fiesta in this game and it looks like what glow ball will likely be the winter contingency event we had a similar event back in halo 5 where they forged up these like little towns and the side of a snowy kind of village and stuff like that and you were just throwing plasma grenades at each other so i assume something very similar with this i'm definitely looking forward to it it sounds like a lot of fun so Rasia recently tweeted this out saying hope it gets something on the lux vol uspa storyline which was started back with season two right at the beginning of the narrative event there saying 343 narrative experience director dan kosich has stated on his blog you meant to say blog instead of blog that this is the start of something and what comes next will have long-term ramifications on the storyline within the halo universe which i really hope they do something because actually the first narrative event that we have for season two i thought was sufficient like that was pretty good gave you a little context the reason why you're playing the new mode last part and standing stuff like that it was great second half 
complete waste of time. It was it wasn't even an event. There, what was the event? To have us watch a cutscene of some guy shooting into a field. Be like, hey Spartan, yeah we're Spartan, and now I'm a Spartan too. Keep playing that multiplayer, all right? Good job. I mean, according to the roadmap here, we don't have a never event until March, so I hope that's enough time for 343 to craft up something, but we'll just have to wait and see. And for this last section, guys, we have some Forge and potentially some campaign information here. This information right here coming from the Forge Lord himself, the lead of Forge, Michael Shore, tweeted this out saying, looking forward to showing y'all some Forge details. This time we'll be looking at the lighting and audio functionality on this game. So we've seen previous leaks about this as well. Uh, we'll see what they do about the lighting because we actually haven't seen the true lighting when it comes to Halo Infinite's Forge. Uh, right now, the leaked version that they're playing doesn't have baked in lighting, which saves on a lot of resources and helps create better atmosphere for these maps. So we haven't, haven't seen Forge in its final form yet. So this will actually be really great to see. I will be making a video detailing everything that happens within this video as well. If you guys want to check that out, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. And it's great to see some audio things coming in as well to help set the mood and atmosphere for your maps to properly make it feel like a truly developed map because forge is way more than just a you know putting blocks around stuff like that it's a legit dev tool now at this point the difference between forge maps and developer made maps is so small now it's almost like you can just rely on forge now now i talked about this campaign leak a little bit earlier on my channel guys talked about it on sunday so make sure you subscribe told you multiple times you're not doing it you're doing it wrong here but basically guys <laughs> it sounds like the falcon not only is going to be returning but we will be returning in campaign as well they're looking at the recent code that was data mined out here by sir asia showcasing falcon type equals campaign meta game type and also just says that for a comment within the code saying that it's waiting new bindings for the falcon so that's a work in progress kind of situation but hey my favorite vehicle ever in halo might just be coming back into the game. We have seen leaked images and videos of the Falcon as well. So I definitely would suggest check out that Saturday video guys if you missed that one. Maybe that's part of those new sandbox items that's coming with season three. And right now guys, I bet you Microsoft is fuming at 343. Not because of the current state of Halo. It's, we all know where it is right now. We're talking about the Halo TV show and how it really did seem to fail to bring in a new audience. Well, Cyberpunk Edge Runners definitely did just that. Now, why did that happen? Well, I'm premiering the video on my channel later this week. Check out this video right here. It'll link you right to it to set the reminder so you guys can catch the premiere when it does go live. I'll be there in chat talking about the Halo show with you guys, talking about Cyberpunk Edge Runners and how it did seem like 343 really dropped the ball again while trying to bring that new audience to Halo. Thank you for watching. Check out the video right here. Make sure you tap the reminder and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.